What should we expect from Greg Rousseau, Leonard Floyd, Von Miller, and the Buffalo Bills edge rushers in 2023? There's plenty to get into, and I'm breaking that down today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout-out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate you all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, we're going to start getting ready for training camp through the lens of the defensive side of the football today. Our focus is on the edge rushers, and we're parlaying our conversation yesterday focused on A.J. Epinesa and Boogie Basham into the entire edge group on today's episode. So there's plenty to dive into a lot of intrigue with this position group, a lot of young talent, a lot of investment. Let's break it all down. I want to start like we have for all the positions by reflecting on 2022 and then talking about what's new with the personnel, what that tells us about the direction of the position group. Then we're going to get into the biggest questions now into the future and, of course, finally set our expectations for 2023. Let's start with that 2022 reflection. And let's begin with Von Miller. And Von Miller signed the six-year, $120 million contract, and he was awesome for 11 games. And then he suffered an ACL tear, had season-ending surgery, and we're all wondering when he's going to be available in 2023 and what he's going to look like when he returns. But for the 11 games that we saw Von Miller He was phenomenal, played over 60% of the snaps, which is a pretty high percentage within the context of the Bills' defense. Collected eight sacks, 10 tackles for loss, 45 pressures. I mean, he was awesome when he was healthy. A very consistent presence, had big-time splash plays in big moments, brought a leadership component that was significant for the entire team, not just the defense. He helped everyone around him, and you could just – tangibly feel the difference in how effective the pass rush was before and after he left. And so he was everything you wanted him to be for 11 games. And then when you needed him the most, he was rehabbing from ACL surgery. And so his return is a big storyline for this team entering 2023. We'll talk about that more in the next segment. Let's get to Greg Rousseau. 13 games, 13 starts. It's been revealed since the season's over that he had a high ankle sprain, which is never an easy injury to deal with. So he missed a few games. And certainly there were some moments where you felt like maybe after the injury, he wasn't quite as effective as he was beforehand. But all in all, 13 starts on the field, 56% of the defensive snaps, collected eight sacks, 10 tackles for loss, 42 pressures. He took a big step. The run defense was outstanding. That's been outstanding for two years in a row. But the growth as a pass rusher really gets me excited about Greg Rousseau. His impact was far more consistent. Like I mentioned, he did drop off a bit after the ankle injury. But overall, I just continue to be very satisfied with Greg Rousseau's trajectory as a football player. And I can't recommend enough uh, cover one. Uh, Eric Turner and Anthony Prohaska had Greg Rousseau on their YouTube channel to kind of break down some of his film, and I encourage you to go check that out because it's really, really good, and you can gain an appreciation for Rousseau's football intelligence and how important football is to him and how many things are second nature to him. Definitely check that out, and I'm really encouraged with Rousseau and how he's developed and what he can be in his third season. A.J. Epinesa, 15 games, two starts on the field for 38% of snaps, six and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, 
26 pressures. We talked all about AJ Epinesa yesterday, so I don't want to go too far in depth here, but uh, at a minimum, AJ Epinesa proved last year that he can be a quality depth player for this defense. Boogie Basham, year two for him, 15 games, didn't start any. On the field for 39% of snaps, collected two sacks, one tackle for loss, and 18 pressures like Epinesa. We talked all about Basham yesterday, but at the end of the day, he kind of proved himself as replacement level depth and obviously a big season ahead for him in his year three season, which is an important one for us to really know what he's going to be. The Bills also had Shaq Lawson, 15 games, started six of them on the field for 48% of snaps, three and a half sacks. He collected six tackles for loss, 20 pressures. And Shaq Lawson is just a player that is fundamentally sound. He's not a high-impact player, but my goodness, he's where he's supposed to be. He's a very good run defender. He competes as a pass rusher. He doesn't have everything in his tool bag to be a high-impact player, but there's a, a high floor that exists when you put him on the field knowing what you're going to get in terms of smart pass rush, good contain rush, and really good run defense. And he's a player that I just generally very, very much appreciate. So when I think about the defensive end group, and even I'll extend this to the defensive line in general in 2022, I think a lot about injuries. Feels like everybody was injured at some point, missing time, some big injuries, have high ankle sprains, calf issues, ACL problems, right? Injuries were a problem. Now, they had some great moments earlier in the season, right? You remember how everyone felt coming out of that Rams game? I think they got like nine sacks or something on uh, Matthew Stafford and didn't have to blitz a single time and were all just gleaming over how exciting it is to not have to blitz to get pressure on the quarterback and all that. And, you know, obviously big pass rush moments against Kansas City. I mean, there was a lot of good rush earlier in the season and then, Injuries happened. I mean, injuries happened starting in week one when Ed Oliver had an ankle injury. And then just one after the other, it felt like we just never got a chance to see this group healthy and together. We didn't really get to see more than a half of football with a healthy Von Miller, Greg Rousseau, and Ed Oliver and Daquan Jones all together. And so I'm excited to see this unit get healthy and it's overall deeper with Leonard Floyd and Puna Ford added to the mix to go with everyone returning. You got a chance to be in better shape to withstand some bumps and bruises along the way, but my goodness, if everyone stays healthy, you feel like you got a really good mix. But again, in 2022, great moments, early injuries, but then I think the, the lasting thought from 2022 when it comes to the defensive ends and even the defensive tackles is that the impact, the presence wasn't enough when the team needed them most, of course, down the stretch and, of course, in the playoffs. And hopefully that can be rectified this year. So what's new about this personnel? And what does that tell us about the direction of the position group? Well, in 2022, we just went through the list. It's Von Miller, Greg Rousseau, A.J. Epinesa, Boogie Basham, and Shaq Lawson. 2023, every player I just mentioned is back. Miller, Rousseau, Epinesa, Basham, Lawson. Plus, you now have Leonard Floyd, Shane Ray, Cameron Klein, and Kingsley Jonathan. Kingsley Jonathan was around last year as a practice squad player that got called up for one game, um, and we'll see what he can offer. But as like your ninth defensive end, that's pretty good. But what does it tell us? I mean, Leonard Floyd, number one, the, the big arrival here. To me, it's really interesting to see the Bills bring in that type of skill set. It further tells me that some of the defensive schematic adjustments that I've talked about multiple times this summer uh, will happen in terms of simulated pressures, uh, using more multiplicity with your fronts, uh, wanting more bursty, bendy guys to complement your compression style players. There's just a lot to like about Leonard Floyd's skill set and what it can mean for the defense and uh, how it leans into more versatility, more multiplicity with what they do. Number two, Shaq Lawson being brought back says something to me. Um, First of all, and I've said this a thousand times, when Von Miller got injured, the guy that started opposite of Greg Rousseau was Shaq Lawson. It wasn't Epinesa. It wasn't Basham. It was Shaq Lawson. And they brought him back. And does he have a clear path to the roster? I'm not calling him a roster lock, but it says a lot that they brought him back and he started over Epinesa in Basham last year. 
there's a comfort that exists with Shaq Lawson. I think he's got a good chance of making this roster. And to me, that's not necessarily a good sign for somebody like Boogie Basham, who's going to be very much in competition with, with a Shaq Lawson and other players to make this roster. And number three, I would say that there's some low risk swings, if you will, with some players that they brought in Shane Ray and Cameron Klein. Shane Ray, we've talked a lot about as a former first round pick that had some promise early on, early on in their career. Injuries happened, you know, out of the NFL for a little bit. Now he's getting another opportunity to play. And what does he do with that opportunity? I'm intrigued to find out it's a low risk swing that could provide a, a nice return. And same thing with Cameron Klein, who the Bills picked off, picked up off of waivers. And Cameron Klein, you know, not that he's done a whole lot in the NFL, but I think you can talk to Colts people and say, hey, when he got some chances, he was intriguing, had some good off seasons with the team. And um, as your, I don't know, eighth defensive end, he's somewhat intriguing to me uh, to see what's, you know, you know, what he has. You know, he's came from a small school. He's just an intriguing player in some ways. So he's a guy that I'll be paying attention to throughout camp. But I think that third, the third point that I wanted to make there in terms of what's new about the personnel and what does it tell us, I wanted to highlight a couple of low risk swings in Shane Ray and of course, Cameron Klein. All right, folks, got a lot more to get into here when it comes to the Bills edge rushers, including my biggest questions now and in the future. But first, our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. When making the first overall pick in fantasy football drafts in 2023, 49ers running back Christian McCaffrey is a guaranteed fit. Alfie McCaffrey is guaranteed to see well more than 300 touches again in his first full season in San Francisco and is the centerpiece of the 49ers offensive engine. McCaffrey checks all the boxes, including his talent and usage, high floor and ceiling. Run with CMC as the guaranteed number one player for a smooth ride to another year of big numbers. With eBay guaranteed fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle, Right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, folks, let's get into my biggest questions for the Bills edge rushers now and in the future. And I've got like seven things written down here because for as much intrigue as there is about this group, there are questions and there's questions with the most important player. And that's Von Miller. So number one is obviously Von Miller's return and how the injury affects him. At the end of the day, Von Miller is a future Hall of Famer, productive football player, a great asset to this football team. But he's also 34 and coming off of an ACL injury. And I know that he's a genetic freak and he's done this before, but he's 34 years old. And you often hear that while it's a 9 to 12 month recovery from the surgery, sometimes it takes two years for a guy to, to feel right. And you've actually heard Von Miller say that this summer when talking about coming off of an ACL tear. So for as much as he hypes up week one, there's also a part of him that fully acknowledges the timetable here and what it could really mean. I mean, look at Trey White, for example, a younger player when he got injured in terms of that ACL, and it took him a while. It's still taking him time to come back and be himself. Trent Murphy, after his ACL tear, was never himself. It took Harrison Phillips 
about two years to really look like himself. So as for as exciting as it is to get Von Miller back at some point this year, whether it's week one, two, three, four, five, or six, I think it's somewhere in there. I think it's going to be week six. How does it affect him? What does he look like when he comes back? Is he Von Miller? It's a very legitimate question. Now, you feel better about that because you have Greg Rousseau and Leonard Floyd to go with more depth. But you want Von Miller to come and be the Von Miller you paid him to be, to be the Von Miller that he was for 11 games, or really 10 and a half games. And the range of possibilities here are significant, but if you break it down to just like the the elevator pitch, the one-sentence thing, he's 34 years old and coming off of an ACL tear, and it was not like early in the season. It was on Thanksgiving Day, and the surgery wasn't for a few weeks after that. So when does Von Miller come back? And what type of impact can he make while being in the early stages of recovering from this injury? Number two, what does Greg Rousseau have in store for year three? And I can't wait to find out because I am really encouraged by the trajectory. He was better than I thought he would be as a rookie, and he was better than I thought he would be as a sophomore. And I'm done being cautious about what type of ceiling Greg Rousseau has. I'm very happy with how he's developed. I love his football acumen. I love his technique. I love his length. I love his power. I love his mindset. He's a good football player. What does he have in store for year three? It's a big year for him. Uh, Obviously, year three always seems to matter, but also you look at the Bills and the decision that they have to make on his fifth-year option after this year. I think it's all trending towards a very easy yes but you want to definitely feel good about that. And so what does Greg Rousseau have in store for year three? Number three is how can Leonard Floyd make the most impact in 2023? I like the skill set. I like the player. Very consistent over the last three years. I like how they can use his skill set to be more diverse with their fronts. But can the Bills get this going quick, right? He was signed after the draft, and it's probably just a one-year thing with the Bills. How do you get the most out of him? Are you willing to make the necessary adjustments to how you want to play football to incorporate his skill set? I think if Von Miller starts the year on the pump, it's a very easy answer because you just have Leonard Floyd do the Von Miller role. But what happens when you have both? And folks, I can't wait to find out. When you can go Floyd, Miller, Rousseau as your top three edge rushers, that is an outstanding trio. And it gives a lot of opportunities for Greg Rousseau to reduce inside and Rush interior gaps. And you're talking about some rush packages that include Miller and Floyd on the outside with Oliver and Rousseau on the inside. That is what I love. That That's the stuff I'm talking about, being able to throw a bunch of dudes at the pocket, and you should have some, some significant wins along the way. But how do you get the most out of Leonard Floyd in 2023? I'm sure Sean McDermott's been thinking a lot about that. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Number four is how does Shaq Lawson fit? This is a fascinating player for me. Started over Epinesa and Basham, brought him back. Is he defensive end three, four, five? How does he fit into this entire puzzle? Does he make the roster? Does he push off a Boogie Basham from the roster? The Bills have rostered up to six defensive ends at once. I think that would be unlikely. They can't be heavy everywhere. They can't keep 10 offensive linemen and six defensive ends and five uh, defensive tackles and seven corners and six safeties. Like you just, none of that can happen. So you have to go, if you go heavy in some spots, you have to go lean in others. I think realistically, the Bills are roster five defensive ends. And that gets real dicey when Von Miller's part of that equation. Good problem to have. But it's unlikely that you're going to keep both Lawson and Basham if everyone's healthy. What does that look like? Somebody a trade candidate. We'll see. But Shaq Lawson absolutely forces the issue here when it comes to that type of discussion because he's back. The next thing is, do we see another step from A.J. Epinesa? Very encouraged with his trajectory. Talked about him at length yesterday. Contract year for him. And we talked about how there's players like him in the league that were quiet for a couple seasons, put it together in year three come back in year four and do the same type of thing, and then they get a decent deal. A.J. Epinesa could be on that type of path. 
And so I'm sure he'll be highly motivated, and I'm eager to see what it looks like. The next thing is what type of opportunity will Boogie Basham have in his third season? Second round pick, folks. I don't think the Bills are eager to get get rid of him or move on, but there's just a lot more that we need to see from him to look like he can be at least a quality depth player for this team this year and next. And if you don't like the trajectory, is he a trade candidate? You know, I'm not projecting a massive return from him, but could there be an opportunity? There's plenty of teams that need pass rush out there that may go back to their pre-draft grade and said, yeah, we had a day two grade on him. He's available for a discount. Let's swing, you know, let's uh, kick the tires and swing the bat and see what happens. But what type of opportunity will Boogie Basham have in year three? Fascinated to find out. And then lastly is can Shane Ray, Cameron Klein, or Kingsley Jonathan further force the issue? I'm already talking about this Lawson Basham, you know, type competition. Well, that's not the whole thing. You still have some guys here in Shane Ray, Cameron Klein, and Kingsley Jonathan that might have something to say about all of that. It's good competition, eager to see how it all plays out. Um, but, you know, can one of them roster? Can a couple of them be on the practice squad? I would guess so. But these competitions, these battles are legit, man. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it like this. Normally, I'm very, I have a lot of convictions about, you know, who the roster locks are and who's making the team. But I, I go through a lot of these position groups and I say, wow, this bottom of the barrel depth, air quotes, bottom of the barrel depth looks pretty doggone good. And it might be tough for some of these guys to, to not make the roster and you know figure out what to do with them from there. It's a good problem to have. Really healthy, good competition all over the place on this Bills roster entering camp. And of course, edge rusher is very much high on that list. All right, folks, I want to talk about my expectations for the Bills Edge Rushers in 2023. But first, I need to tell you about Bird Dogs. Absolutely love their shorts and joggers. They make you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg. They give you a truly sculpted look, and they just fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix the issue by inventing cloud-knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs uses anti-stink sweat-wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And I love Bird Dogs because they're so versatile. You can use them at the gym. You can also use them to go out on a date. My wife actually is very jealous that I can use the same shorts that I use to work work out in to wear to go out to dinner with her. Um, So check them out. They're versatile. They look great. They keep you cool and dry all day long. So head to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and enter our promo code locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler. Get yourself some bird dogs. You won't want to take them off. We promise you. All right, folks, let's close out our conversation today about the Bills edge rushers entering training camp by reflecting on my expectations for the unit, things that I have in mind for what I want to see in 2023. And number one, when Von Miller returns, I want him to be Von Miller. I really do. I mean, you made a big commitment to him. Six years, $120 million. You converted uh, some of his signing bonus to salary uh, to get yourself some cap space. You're locked into this player, right? And he's aging, and the last thing you wanted was a year one ACL tear that kept him out of the lineup for the playoffs. And who knows when he'll be back. But when he's back, we'd love for him to be Von Miller. So number one is for that recovery to be successful and take the time that it needs. And when Von Miller comes back, it's not the Tredavious White return right? Where it looks okay. Is he really back? You know, that type of stuff. I want Von Miller to return and be Von Miller. Number two is for the Bills to maximize Leonard Floyd. That is a unique skill set that the Bills can utilize to do a lot of different things on defense. He's a very good edge setter against the run. He can drop in coverage. He can rush. He's athletic. He's been consistent. Don't let him come to your football team. And all of a sudden he's not as good as he was the last three years. Let's maximize Leonard Floyd. Number three, 
I want for Greg Rousseau to make it a no-brainer to pick up his fifth-year option, and then I'll take it a step further. I also want us to start to worry about how much it's going to cost to lock him up long-term. You know, Greg Rousseau looks to me like the Bills' best opportunity in a while to get a big-time impact player from a draft pick. You know, the Bills were on a roll for a while. Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds, uh, Trey White, Deion Dawkins, Matt Milano, Taron Johnson. You're drafting these players. You're getting a lot of returns, and they wind up being pillars of your operation. Well, over the last few years, the Bills haven't been quite as successful. Greg Rousseau is one of those players that you can look at and point to from a stretch of drafting that was more mediocre than excellent, right? And feel like that's your redeeming player. And to get him late in the first round where you typically don't see a lot of edge rushers get drafted and matter. I mean, look at some of the guys that were drafted, I think the same year as him, right in that same range, whether it was Peyton Turner with the Saints or Joe Tryon Shoyanka with uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Those players haven't looked anywhere near as good as Greg Rousseau, and they're kind of drafted in the same range in the same year. So Greg Rousseau being a big-time draft hit is looking like it's happening, and the Bills need that to happen. And I think taking one more step next year, kind of pushing, you know, being a double-digit sack guy and being a real game wrecker, I think he's got a chance to be that. And number four is is definitely a way that the Bills can get even more out of Greg Rousseau, and that's giving him more opportunity for him to rush inside. That's I really want to see this. You know, he's proven that he can be a good outside pass rusher, but I think getting him isolated on some guards is going to be nightmarish for a guard with his length and his quickness when you apply it to the inside. Um, it's going to be it's going to be some good favorable matchups, and so I would be utilizing that quite a bit, um, and I hope that that happens because I think you can get more out of him and just because of that, be better on defense because you're impacting the passer more. And the last thing I have written down is just for, I'd love to see AJ Epinesa continue to build off the strides that he made in 2022. It took three years, but AJ Epinesa is a quality depth player for this defense. Again, that's not what you're looking for in a second round draft pick, but he's a quality depth player that is still young. He's 25 years old. And I want to see him build off of that. Can he make even more of an impact in year four? And maybe that means it's his last season in Buffalo, but be nice to get two seasons where you feel like at least he was quality depth. And so I'm interested to see what he looks like this year. And so that's where I would, that's what I would point to in terms of my expectation. Vaughn to return and be Vaughn. Bills to maximize Leonard Floyd. Greg Rousseau to make it a no-brainer to pick up his fifth-year option and for us to start worrying about how much it's going to cost to sign him long-term. I'm talking north of $20 million a season. I'm hoping that that's the type of conversation we start to have with Greg Rousseau. want to see Rousseau to have more opportunities to rush inside and for A.J. Epinesa to build off of the strides that he made in 2022. All right, folks, that's it for today's episode. Next week is our final week before training camp, and so we're going to fit in our final position groups to preview. So defensive tackle, linebacker, corner, and safety will also get herd mentality into the mix probably on Wednesday next week. So um, I'm excited about all that, but then I'm excited for the following week, which is training camp. Um, we'll have a couple of episodes before the Bills report, and then the Bills report, and we are in season mode. We're going to have practice recaps. We're going to talk about the big storylines, preseason, And then games are going to be here, and it's going to be really real, and I can't wait for all of it. So make sure that you are subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. I look forward to catching up with you again on Monday.